Hello, hello. Welcome back to Midnight Kitchen. Today, we're going to be talking about some local Chinese favorites. What do we love to eat as locals? This is probably not a surprise or secret, but I love, love, love eating out. For me, each dining experience is a learning experience. From cultures to cooking techniques to unusual flavor pairings. There are so many good restaurants in Bellevue and even in the Seattle area. I have so many to tell you about, but today we're just going to be focusing on a handful to start and there will be more to come. Don't worry. Today we're going to be starting our foodie adventure in the Crossroads area. It has always been a foodie area, but so many restaurants are opening that are fantastic. Our first restaurant will focus on Yunnan rice noodles. It is called Over the Bridge Rice Noodles, also called Gokyu Mai Xin. Why Over the Bridge, you ask? Well, it comes from a romantic Chinese tale about a wife bringing her husband lunch while he's preparing for a important national exam. She had to cross this bridge to get there and that's where the name comes from. The technique focuses on adding a thick layer of hot oil on top of this boiling broth and that helps retain that broth's temperature. Because of this hot broth temperature, she was able to cook raw meats and prepare a fresh meal for her husband. I've tried this restaurant in person and also takeout during the pandemic several times and was impressed with the variety and flavors of their broth. You will see a rice noodle centric menu with dry forms, a pre-made soup form where all the flavors are already made for you. And the third option is the over the bridge form. And this is what you see here. I love how the individual ingredients are all separated into individual plates, just like if you were doing mise en place. As I mentioned earlier, the highlight is this hot, hot broth. You're able to cook raw meat even without an external gas or electrical stove. The broth has retained that hot temperature due to that layer of oil on top. At its hottest temperature, we add in the raw meats first, the egg, and also the ingredients one by one. When the meats are cooked to your liking, you can add the rice noodle and the whole dish is ready to be enjoyed. I remember having this exact dish in Yunnan and my mind was blown when I saw that you could add chunks of raw chicken in there and it'll be perfectly cooked by the time you enjoy your noodle soup. This heat trapping method was not only intelligent, but I thought it was really fun and clever. These ingredients are all customizable, so you can add or subtract any ingredients as you wish. I also recommend their popcorn chicken as a snack. It is well marinated with that five spice flavor penetrating throughout the entire piece with a crunchy exterior and at the same time it's still juicy. The bubble waffle is a great dessert choice. Chinese style rice noodle soup is one of our favorites as you can tell. We make it all the time at Midnight Kitchen and one day we'll be sharing this with you in another video. I've ordered takeout from this restaurant and several others and these noodles travel really well. We head across the street to try one of our favorite snacks, the mochi donut. These mochi donuts are known for their chewy mochi interior with a lightly fried exterior and dipped in very creative icing and toppings. This ring-like structure where each tiny ball is a donut itself is perfect for sharing. 
Remember the flavors rotate every week so you can always check back to see if there's a new creative flavor that you like. We love, love, love rice noodles and of course fried chicken. And this is our recommendation for spot number two. Their fried chicken is fantastic. This is one of our go-to for Chinese style fried chicken. Not only is it well marinated with your classic Chinese spices like peppercorn and five spice, but the outside batter is so light and crunchy. Something different than your classic Southern or American fried chicken. The broth at this spot is different compared to our Yunnan over the bridge rice noodles. It is actually less flavorful in terms of robustness of the broth, but at the same time you get more toppings and often items that you can choose or add more to. It is a more filling meal, a larger size portion with similar noodle usage. In terms of broth quality though, I do recommend spot number one. For portion size, this is great. I've also tried several other specialized items on their menu and really enjoyed that soya braised chicken with rice. These soup pots come with their classic hot pot ingredients from tofu to meatballs and various vegetables depending on what's in season. Again, you can add or subtract as you wish. Next, we're going to be talking about soup dumplings, also known as xiaolongbao or xiaolongbao in Cantonese. It directly translates to little basket dumplings. They're called soup dumplings because of the amount of broth or soup that is within each individual dumplings. I remember having Xiao Cijie for the first time via Uber Eats, and I remember I was so impressed with not only the meat filling quality, but also the amount of juice for a frozen dumpling. A good Xiaolongbao consists of three main components, the skin or the wrapper itself, to the filling consistency and third the amount of soup and the quality of that soup that is embedded within each bun. Ideally a great xiaolongbao has a thin skin or the thin wrapper however that could be a personal preference. Second the amount of filling and also the consistency of that meat filling is important. It should be fine ground except not so ground in that it's mushy. And third, the broth should have a lot of flavor, clean yet not oily, and the amount of broth is a characteristic of a good xiaolongbao. As you can see, we are carb lovers at Midnight Kitchen. Next, we go to another dumpling noodle restaurant called Dozone, and again, we're going to order similar items. This is very similar to a Chinese style tapas. You get to sample a variety of flavors and textures. For us, we like Dozone not only because of the pricing for individual place, but also each is well done. It tastes homemade, uh, flavors are on point, and fairly affordable for what you get. We appreciate the mastery. If you were to do this at home, it would take so long to gather all the ingredients and also to perfect the techniques. There are several honorable mentions and also must try dumpling restaurants in the Seattle and Bellevue area. I can't wait to tell you about them in subsequent videos. I love, love, love exploring when it comes to food from Japanese, Korean, Italian, you name it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this one, please like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.